Hey everybody. Hello, welcome to the morning manna where we have conversations, heart to heart conversations with God. We have heart to heart conversations with ourselves, with our family, with our friends. We have these heart to heart conversations so that we can be real about what we feel. We have these heart to heart conversations so that we can be real about what God is doing in our lives, what's going on in our lives. Heart to heart conversations are real, raw, authentic. They are conversations that need to be had. Why? Because there are issues, there are situations, there are trials and tribulations that we go through that in order to, I believe, in order to maneuver through life, in order to truly um, live, we have to be able to um, admit certain things that we're dealing with. I think sometimes, I'll even go as far as to say, a lot of times we try to, uh, we do a lot of pretending. Um, a lot of times we do a lot of uh, pushing to the side. A lot of times we ignore um, things that are happening in our lives that we need to not only pay close attention to, but that we also need to um, reflect upon. We need to marinate on. We need to meditate on, as the Bible would say. We need to really um, take an in-depth look at what's going on. So that's what heart-to-heart, -heart, that's, that's, that's what heart-to-heart -heart conversations are. And you are watching The Morning Manna with Jacina K. And we're here to just talk. We just talk. And we allow God to move. We uh, listen to the Spirit of God and what He has to say in this moment, in this hour. That can change minute by minute. Um, I am one that flows with the Spirit. I am open to... Um, the leading and the guidance of the Holy Spirit. So come on in and join me. Be a part of the conversation. Listen, whether you're watching me on Facebook, whether you're watching me on Instagram, whether you found me on Twitter, whether you are watching me um, on TikTok or YouTube, whatever your means or your channel of finding me, and tuning in to this video, whether it's live or the replay, I want you to join the conversation. Don't be silent. Let's talk. Some of your comments I may see after the, the, the taping, but I want to know what's on your heart. I want to know what's on your mind because I want you to know that we are in this together. We're in it together. So let us pray. Father God, we thank you for this day. We thank you for your goodness. You know, when I, when I stop and I think about how good you are, and I think about how amazing you are, uh, I get overwhelmed. I get overwhelmed because you are so good. <laughs> I, I, I mean, you are so good. You are such a consistent you are, you are such a consistent love. You, you're, you're such a uh, uh, faithful, um, loving, gentle, a compassionate father. Um, sometimes I don't understand it. Sometimes I run from it. Sometimes it doesn't make sense. Sometimes I'm looking for you to, 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 to do a certain thing because that's what I'm used to. Uh, but you have shown yourself <clears throat> over and over again. 
You have proven yourself to be exactly what I need. And I'm so grateful. I'm so grateful. I'm grateful for the place that I'm in with you. I, I, I'm grateful, Father, and, and, and not just me, but for us. For I thank you, God, that we, we, we desire more of you. I thank you that um, um, even when we don't understand what you're doing in our lives, you're still, <laughs> you still show up so strongly and you remind us. Whether it's through a billboard or through a, a, a through a, a, um, a devotional, or maybe someone says something or does something um, throughout the day or at, at a particular part of the day that 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 shows us, oh, he's with me. Thank you for that. Thank you that we can count on you. You are a God that can be counted on. That's so hard to come by in the world today. It's so hard. Sometimes we get so caught up in everything that's going on and we admit we're distracted. We admit that 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 um, our world is noisy. We admit that there are times that you call us and you want to talk to us and we ignore. We admit it. There are times when you know we know that you're calling us to you and we we <laughs> we choose something else. Um and then when we do choose you, we're, we're tired, we're exhausted. Um, but even in that, we thank you that you accept us for who we are. I'm so glad about it. Thank you that you accept us for who we are. No matter what our issue is, God, you accept us and we thank you. We thank you. Thank you for just being who you are. Thank you. Thank you. Even my soul says thank you. My spirit cries thank you. Thank you, Abba. We bless you. We love you. We adore you. And we give you all the praise, the honor, and the glory. As we, as we sit at your feet today, as we, as we sit Martha down and we become Mary, I pray that you will speak to us. I don't even know what you want to talk about today, but you do. I pray that I will hear your voice and your voice only. I pray that you will speak to me and speak through me today to speak a word for somebody that will watch this video and they will, listen, I pray that you will speak mightily through me. That they will know without a shadow of a doubt, God hears me. He hasn't forgotten me. He hears me. That's what I was talking to you about this morning. Do you hear me? Sometimes I don't feel like you do. Sometimes I feel like I'm talking to myself. Do you hear me? I pray that you will, you, will, you will give us something today that will confirm, I hear you, daughter. I hear you, son. And I'm with you. We thank you in advance for what you're going to do how you're going to minister to us today. Speak Holy Spirit, for we are listening. We want to hear from you. Hallelujah. Glory to your name, God. Hallelujah. We just bless you. Come on, bless the Lord. Take a moment and, and just bless him. God, we thank you. We love you. We honor you. We give you praise today. We slow down. We just slow down. We slow down to give you praise. We slow it down. We're always moving, going, boom, boom, boom. But for at, at this moment, we slow down so that we can hear from you. Speak, God. We are listening. Help us to see what you're saying from your perspective. In Jesus' name. Help us to not be just hearers. That's my heart in this. That's my heart in this season. 
and going forward. That I would not be just a hearer of the word, but my heart's desire is to be a doer of your word. So we thank you for it. And we are in great expectation of what you're getting ready to do. In Jesus' name, amen. Fam, what's up, y'all? How y'all doing today? What's up, what's up? Come on in the room. Come on in the room. He's got something to say. Lend your ear today. Open up your heart. Come on in the room. Now, that was the slow version. Here we go. Come on in the room. Come on in the room, he's got something to say, lend your ear today, open up your heart, come on in the room, come on in the room, come on in the room, come on in the room. What's up good people, it's your girl, your hope dealer, that's right, it's your girl, the truth seeker and the truth teller. That's here to keep that thing real with you so that you could be real with yourself, so that you could be real with God, so that God can do some real things in your life and you can see some real progress. We don't come on here to play no games. We come on here because we about that life, that God life. Ah, yes, sir. We about that God life. So good morning, fam. Good morning, good people. Good evening, good night, whatever time you may be watching this video. Listen, let's go. We are starting with our devotional. Remember, for the rest of the year, we are reading from Command Your Morning by Dr. Cindy Trim, amazing woman of God. So if you do not know of her, I highly recommend that you look her up, honey. She will bless your life. Yes, she will. You have to put on some help. Jesus is my help, but these glasses are my help, too. <laughs> Jesus is my help. Boom, boom. Okay, I got to focus because I got a I got a meeting today, so I got to focus. Focus. Somebody say focus. Don't say that. Don't say that. I already know to do that. Let's go. Prayer isn't a rule book. Prayer isn't a rule book. Our text today for our devotional is coming from Matthew. The seventh chapter, verses 13 and 14. And we're going to be reading today's text out of the Message Bible. All right. So again, Matthew 7, 13 through 14. And it reads, don't look for shortcuts to God. Well, somebody say, well, well, Jesus, the way to life to God is vigorous and requires total attention. I'm going to read it again without my um, Baptist, uh, my little Baptist swing. Don't look for shortcuts to God. The way to life to God is vigorous and requires total attention. Listen. Bottom line, don't try to rush when you're coming into the presence of God. Don't try to rush when you're looking for him. Don't listen. You you got to make him a priority. He, you know, you've got to be intentional about him. You you listen, he's got to be first. God wants to be first in your life. Period. And I put a T on it. I'm a reading teacher, but I add a T. Because that's that's for the that's for the uh ebonics. Those people that know about that ebonics talk, that ebonics lingo, put that T on the end. Period. God wants, listen, it ain't no shortcuts to God. Either you're gonna be in or you not. And a lot of us are trying to straddle the fence, and God said it's not gonna work out. It's just not going to work out. You're going to have to choose this day whom you are going to serve. Who is it going to be? I heard that. God said, a lot of, you've heard the scripture say, 
you know, who are you going to serve, you know, me or the enemy? You're going to choose life or death. What you going to choose? I just heard him say, sometimes you, you've got to move yourself out of the way. Some of us mm -hmm, choose us. God, I love you and everything, but, you know, God, I want to do your will, but, I mean, you know my heart, though, I mean, you know what I'm saying. You know my struggles and everything. God is like, uh-uh. Who you going to serve? Who, whose side are you going to be on? Are you going to be hot or cold? Because I can't stand lukewarm. I spit that out. A lukewarm believer? You jumping from one thing to the, one minute you with me, the next minute, mm -mm, that don't, that, you, you, you ever been in a relationship with somebody that was lukewarm? Come on, let's talk about it. Have you ever been in a relationship with someone that's lukewarm? Let me tell you something. It is not a good thing to be lukewarm. I can't stand it. I don't even know many people that like lukewarm water. Most people like their water cold or they like their water hot. Very few pe people like room temperature water. I, I can drink room temperature water because I used to be a dancer. Well, she still knows how to dance, honey. Let's not mistake in that baby. And she's good. But anyway, we're talking about praise dancing. And I, I'm still, I can still, you know, so I look, don't, don't get me started now. Don't. Listen, y'all don't even want it. Y'all not even ready for that other side of me. That's a whole nother ministry in and of itself. But I remember when I used to be a dancer, when I used to teach uh, praise dance, and I would tell my dancers all the time, you cannot, after you finish dancing, you cannot have a cold, cold bottle of water. You have to drink that room temperature because you you need to drink something so that it can soothe your body after you you know you've been out there sweating and you know you need to have some lukewarm water room temperature water but god's saying uh -uh, i don't want that the questions may change today remember because it's a conversation today our conversation is flowing what is your relationship with the father like are you hot? Are you cold? Or are you lukewarm? Are you on fire for God? Like, oh, God, I love you, Lord. And I'm not talking about, you know, we have moments. Everybody has moments. Don't let these people out here in these uh, um, life streets fool you, honey. Everybody has moments, boo, where they may be on fire for the Lord today and, and, and tomorrow they're like, now, you know what, God? I'm just really struggling over here. That's life. Okay. A lot of, a lot of these deep, these deep people, these, these really super spiritual people, these religious people, cause that's what they are. They will make you feel like something is wrong with you. Cause every day you ain't, you know, jumping up and down. Some days you don't have a jump. And some days you feel down. That's okay. God understands. God loves you just the same. It's no problem. I believe this is what God has been dealing with me about. Jay Cena. Are you ready to surrender? everything to me that's what we're gonna talk about in a minute let's go mm -mm. got to put these girls back on a lot of people look for a rule book for prayer they want step one two three and so on so they don't have to think or pour that much of themselves into their prayers oh <laughs> uh-oh they want to check, they want to just check off the steps and feel they have done their duty. Do you feel like that with God? That you, 
when you when you do your morning devotional, when you spend your time with God, do you feel like that? Like I did my little morning thing, so now I'm good. Listen, the 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 questions that I ask, they're for you. And they're for you to be real with you about you and about your relationship with the Father and even with yourself. So be honest in your answering. Do you check off? I did my devotional. Check. I did my prayer this morning. Check. Okay, I'm good. Oh, that's good, God. God just said, do you do it? Do you do it? Do you truly do it to spend that time with me? Or do you do it so that you don't be convicted that you didn't spend that time with me? Does that make sense? Like when you, when you pray in the morning, when, whenever you spend your time with God, do you say, oh, I got to get this in because I don't want to feel bad. I don't want to feel, you know, the, end, the enemy is the one that brings, I got to turn my heater on, y'all, I'm cold in here. The enemy is the one that brings condemnation. Remember, we've talked about that in the past. God brings conviction. So when you don't pray, when you don't spend time with God, the enemy is going to come to try to condemn you, to try to make you feel bad about that. You can't stay there. Repent and fix it. Get up the next time. Pull away the next time. Be intentional about your time with God. He's not talking about that. That's not, that's not what we're talking about right here. What we're talking about right here is. Do you treat your time with God like a checkoff? Your prayer time with him like a checkoff? Or do you really give God your undivided attention? Are you distracted when you're praying? Are you, you know, do you, do you have a lot going on when you're praying? You know, um, I was, I was convicted last night because I was reading my word and I had my phone next to me. And like many of you, if I do not set my area up, for my time with God, I am going to be distracted. I'm just going to tell you the truth. And he said to me several times, I need you to go on the couch or I need you to go sit at your desk. Because when you try to have time with me in your bed and see, I want it to be a comfy place. I want it to be like a, you know, like a comfy place when I'm spending time with God. And he does, he showed me, <laughs> let me tell you something. When God shows you something, it's to make you aware so that you can make adjustments. What he's really saying is, I love you too much for you to remain in this condition, and I need to tell you about it. Sometimes our family, our friends, our loved ones, whoever, they will see us doing something wrong, but, you know, m m most often they won't even say anything. They'll just kind of brush it off. God said, in this season, and I've been doing it before, but I'm not playing with you anymore. I'm not brushing off anything. When I see you out of line, when I see you over here sinning, when I see you over here doing something that you don't have no business doing, when I, when I see you doing something that grieves me, when I see that you're not focused, when I, when I see something that does not line up with me, I'm going to tell you about it. It's going to be up to you what you do about it. Period. With a T. God is not going to force you. He's not going to try to make you. If you, listen, listen. There is a need in you. And I believe whether you are an unbeliever or a believer, there is a need in you. It's, it's, it's there. There is a void. There is a need. 
a desire for God. Whether you know that, see that, understand that, want to admit that or not, that's not, that's, not, we, we, that's not the issue. That's not the point. Every single person on the planet has a need, a desire for God and Him alone. Because we live in a falling world, because we live in a we have a sinful nature, we most often seek to fill that void somewhere else. A lot of us discount our time with God. Like we don't really You do this. We do this. Okay, I'm spend time with God, you know. I'm going to spend time with God real fast and get that done. But then you'll spend all this time on social media. And guess what? You ain't going to have no con. You, you, the enemy ain't going to bother you on social media. He's going to let you. But the Holy Spirit will come. And the Holy Spirit will convict you and say, gosh, you've been on here for about two hours now. And you don't even realize it's been two hours. And God is saying, you know them 15 minutes that you were on social media? You really could have been spending that with me. I was thinking about this this morning. I heard, I, I, I was listening to these prayers um, on the way to work this morning. And as I was listening to the prayers, um, one of the scriptures that came up was to pray without ceasing. And I remember I used to have these little these little tit for tats with God about praying without ceasing. And I would be like, what are you talking about? How in the world am I supposed to pray without ceasing? Like, I got to go to work. <laughs> I'm at work. How am I going to pray without ceasing? Let me, let me cover this thing up. Okay, I need to remember to do that tomorrow. And God says, the way that you pray without ceasing, J.C., is you talk to me all throughout the day. Hold on, y'all. I need to cover these numbers up so I'm not looking at the numbers. Um, you continue to spend time with God. How? How do I talk to God, JC, you know, all throughout the day when I got to do my job? I, you know, I'm in school. I can't sit. Mm -mm. You take little moments. You know how somebody's on your mind. This is this is how this is how God shows me all the time. You know how somebody's on your mind, like you may be going throughout your day and boop, I might fall on your mind, and boop, your spouse or your child or your mom or whoever. Somebody falls on your mind, right? You weren't even thinking about them, and boop, they fall on your mind. Number one, God has told me when that happens, I need you to immediately pray for that person. <clears throat> And what I usually do is I go into tongues. I just roseke shababa shanti shukura ba sandiria bosa bomia ike baba soto raba kasa ta ramona baba shete tara lo raba kasa ta leila. I mean, like whoever it is, I immediately and I don't unless I feel led to spend a lot of time there. I just raba sekete. I just spend a couple seconds there, fifteen to thirty seconds there, and then I move on. Unless I don't feel a release to move on. And so God has shown me that I can do that with him as well. I may see something like I'm, I'm just in a place now where I'm very observant. I'm, 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 I'm more aware of what's going on around me and what's going on in me. I'm, I'm very aware. So I oftentimes I pick up his presence in small things small small things uh just a few minutes ago i saw a bird just fly by and he just sat right there on the rooftop because i'm on the uh, second floor and so he's just he just sat right there on the rooftop of the building that i'm looking at and as soon as i saw that bird that bird immediately reminded me of the scripture in matthew where it talks about don't be worried about what you're going to eat. Don't be worried about what you're going to drink. If I take care of the birds in the air, 
Don't worry about your clothes. Don't worry about don't worry about that stuff. If I take care of the birds in the air, I'm gonna take care of you. Every time I see a bird, that scripture comes to mind. Every time. And so often, if I'm sitting here at my desk or when I'm standing up teaching and I see a bird come by, it's almost to mean like God is speaking, glory to God. He is speaking to me and he's saying, Jacina, I got you. I got you. I'm going to take care of it. Be free like that bird. Birds just be free. They just take off. And they just go. Every time I see a bird, I say, oh my goodness. It's almost like he, he, he uses that moment to remind me of who he is and what he said. And even if I don't pray it out loud, I this morning in my prayer time, God said to me, JC, you have been doing a lot of silent prayers, a lot of quiet prayers. Because I, I was I was feeling a little, you know, check offish this morning. I was feeling a little check offish, like I really haven't sat down, sat down and prayed. I really haven't spent a lot of time in prayer within the last couple of weeks. Like I pray, I'm on the go and I'm praying. And the enemy was tearing me up, y'all. He was tearing me up. He was like, yeah, look at you. This morning manner, this heart to heart conversations with God, keeping it real. You need to keep it real. <laughs> Child, you know, that, that joker comes for you, honey. Even when you didn't send for him, baby, he comes for you. You hear me? And he was coming for me, baby. He was like, how you going to get on the morning, man, and be doing all this him? You don't even pray. First of all, I do pray. I almost called them a little in, a little something, but I'm trying to be delivered of my words. You know, when you're a prophet, when you are a teacher, a preacher, you have problems with your mouth. I have to be conscious of what I say. I, God, God's been working with me on it, because as soon as it come up, he'll be like, I don't, don't you say that. And I'll be like, yes, Lord. But he was bothering me because I wasn't, you know, I haven't, just just honest, I haven't been spending my typical, my consistent prayer time with God, like blocking all time, like God is me and you. I really, most of my prayer time with God is on the cuff. I could be sitting here preparing for the morning manna and I'll say a little something. I could be preparing for class, say a little something. I could be right in class. The student's working, and I could be having a silent conversation with God, just praying inwardly, speaking in tongues, praying in tongues inwardly. I want to help somebody today. I don't even know what I said that we was going to talk about, but I just feel like this devotional is, is what, we need to, what we need to talk about today. And even, while I was, even while I'm talking to you, the enemy is bothering me. And um, I got to say something because I want to be very, I, I, I believe in being transparent and honest. And then we're going to come back to this. I really, I've been struggling with Moving to Jacina Speaks. God told me about a month ago to start moving things off of my personal page and move it to my ministry page. It's just what, it's, what it is. I wasn't like resistant as in um, being insubordinate about it. Like, I'm not doing that, God. I don't want to do that. I'm, I'm not in that place anymore where I do that with God. I may slowly drag my foot, um, but I'm going to do what he says because I want to obey him and I want to please him with my life. 
Um, I can't choose the parts of me that says yes to God. I have to say yes. I have to say yes. And that's so uncomfortable. Um, and he's saying to me, okay, I'm pulling you away from uh, the likes, the hearts. The comments, I'm pulling you away from that. Uh, I, I, it's almost like a testing period, if you will. Like, and, and, and I, I, I believe that many of you are going through this as well. It's almost like where you feel like he's silent or people in your life are silent. Does that make sense? Um, it's almost like he's saying, will you do it without the, will you do it without the, will you do it without the text? Oh, that word blessed me today. Will you do it without the, uh, uh, the cash apps and the, and the, Zay will you do it? Even though I'm not looking for that. I have come to that place where whether you say anything or not, I'm going to say what, what I feel God is, is, is leading me to say or giving me to say or a combination of that. Um, um, and he's reminded me that um, what he's doing is reminding me that uh, sometimes, you know, they are listening, but they're working. They're listening, but they're just they're driving. They're listening, but they are. And sometimes the word is so rich, it's so meaty that the commenting, they don't, they can't. They just need to listen. I'm going to tell you the problem that I have discovered with social media. And I believe that's why he's moving my platform to YouTube. He's trying to move my platform to more of a video style than a communicative style. Um, because he he's seeing if he could trust me. Um, almost kind of like how it started here. Like with me being in my classroom, there's nobody in here. I'm talking to an audience of one, literally. I'm talking... <laughs> I'm, 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 I'm doing what God says for him. This is about him. And as a result of my obedience to him, you benefit from it, right? And so I noticed that when I came to Jacina Speaks, uh, the numbers dropped. Um, there was less talking. Um, I can see the analytics and it'll start off like this and then it'll go like this and then it'll flatline. And I'm going to be very honest because I don't come on here to play with y'all. I, I keep, I, I say this all the time, your realness, your transparency, your ability to be vulnerable with yourself, with God, with other people, that's what's going to change your life. You over there acting like you don't have no issues. You over there acting like, you know, you all of that in a bag of chips with dip and a Pepsi or whatever your preferred drink is. Baby, no. We all got those little insecurities. We all get uncomfortable. We all feel like God is pushing just a little too hard now. You see me over here doing this. Why you want to push me, sir? That's what I be saying. Dad. Daddy, why you want to push me? I'm I'm good. He said, that's the problem. Jesus, you're good. I don't need you to be good. I need you to lean, girl, daughter, son. I need you to constantly be uncomfortable because when you are uncomfortable, you need me. Whenever you get good, Jesus, somebody... What time is it? I got to go at 8.20. I got to go at 8.20. I got to go. When you start getting comfortable, 
Then you start relying on your own abilities, your own giftings, your own wisdom. Your, you, you start relying on you. And God says, I got to throw a little something in there every now and then. You got to throw a little wrench up in that thing every now and then to get you all. Hey, 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 hey. Remember, don't you forget. Because you're making them coins now. Don't forget when you was in lack. Because you got the business now. Don't forget when you were struggling. And ain't nobody know who you are. Don't, don't you forget. Listen, do not forget to include me in everything all the time, every day. I ain't no check off. I ain't no little rule book, boo. I want to be a consistent, listen, I want to be your foundation. I want to be it. All. You're everything. And I remember one day I was having problems trying to log on or whatever. And I said, well, let me just log on to the Jacina and log on to. And God said, that's not what I told you to do. And I felt, oh, I just felt so bad. I told you, Jacina speaks. I will send those that need to hear what you have to say. Stay focused. So I want to say this to somebody. I want to share this with somebody. Whatever it is that God has told you to do, do it. And do it as unto the Lord. If you ever find yourself in a position where you're doing it for yourself, Whether you're doing it for other people. If, if that's ever out of line. Recognize it. Listen to me. Recognize it. And line yourself back up. Because I'm telling you. If you don't. There is going to be a price to pay. That's number one. Number two. Do what you do. Do it unto God. And do it with a spirit of excellence. And don't worry about who, what, how, when, where. Just do what you do. Some days I get on, there's 20, 30 people on here. The, 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 the comments is popping. Pop, 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 pop. I'm like, okay, they're getting it. Yes, yes. And I'm going to be honest with you. Some days I leave and I go, well, did I do a good job? And nobody even really say anything. God said, your focus is off. Focus. Your focus is off. You're worried about the wrong thing. They got your attention. I don't have your attention. They do. You need to shift your focus. Get back in line. I didn't even know I was doing that. I didn't even know I was doing that until I really got in a place with God where I was, until I stopped making, making it like a rule book. Uh, when I stopped, you know, checking things off and having these little quickies with God. And instead I would have these meaningful moments throughout my day with God. That's when he began to show me, let me show you how you're, how you're looking to people to be what only I can be. Let me show you. I know you don't see it, so let me show you. And I can only show you when you slow down long enough. When you're moving too fast, I can't show you. I can't show you what I need you to see when you're distracted. Let me tell you how I know you deal with this also. Let me give you an example. If you make a post, let's say you make a post... And you post a, a scripture or you post, especially if you post something that you yourself said, like you pinned something yourself and you believe it's something that God said to you to, to post or to share. Um, you may post a picture 
and you think, you know, you're killing it in that picture. You think it's a beautiful picture or whatever it may be. And baby, you don't get them likes. You don't get them hearts. You don't get them comments. That thing will make you feel some type of way. It will make you feel like, well, dang, did anybody see it? No, you mean to tell me only three people? Feel what I feel? Dang. I, 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 I specifically remember God telling me to say something, post this. Because when I'm in a real quiet space, like when I go on, on a fast or if I go on, you know, I'm off of work and I take that time to rest. God will like download, like, -da 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 -da. like it'll just come like, -tut 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 -tut. and I'll get a word after word after word after word after word. And I don't write any of these things down. I got to stop doing that. I know. Just don't say nothing. I already know. I've, I've, I've gotten the pop on the hand several times by my mentor several people like you need to write these things down in a book and i'm like i'm not an author like i just be saying what god tell me to say and i move on now i remember one time god told me to say something and um i said it i posted it but it didn't get enough likes so i deleted it when I tell you I could feel Papa like, what did you do? <laughs> Y'all, it was almost like he did this. He got in my face and he said, I don't care if they give you no likes. The only person that you need to be worried about in this season is me. What did I say? What do I think about what you're doing? Did I put my stamp of approval on it? Did you please me? That's all you need to be thinking about in this season, young lady. And this how I was. Boo-hooing. I felt sick to my stomach. I could feel it right now. I, I could feel that all over again right now, like, I missed him. I I I I I I I chose I chose them over him because it didn't get a like. Because it didn't it didn't get a heart. Because nobody commented. Listen to me. The reason that you need to stay in communication with God, the reason that you need to constantly be communing with God, the reason that you need to make sure that he is first, the reason that you make, need to make sure that he is in the right place and position in your heart, the reason that he has to have first place in your life is because when you are faced with distractions and noise, when you are faced with storms and issues, when life's pressure and the pain of life and living and just being, when it comes upon you, when you have to deal with it, and listen, and there is no relief, there is no quick relief, uh-uh, you have got to have a prayer life, you have got to have a relationship with the Father where he is not a quickie, you're not looking to check off, I spent time with him today, you're not, look. listen, you have got to get so serious about your relationship that it is like the air that you breathe, I'm telling you if you don't you will allow other people other platforms other things to make you feel some type of way because you're not getting that thing that you're looking for and he is the only one that can feel it i'm telling you i am getting to i'm not there all the way but i'm getting to a place where i do not care if it pleases god i'm good I'm good. 
I'm good. I'm good. I can't worry about this stuff because it changes, Jesus. It changes. The people that come on changes. The numbers change. It changes. I just swipe the comments. I just swipe them. I just swipe them so I don't see them. Mm -mm. I'm not going to, I can't subject myself to that. Why? Because I got a work to do. I hear you, Holy Spirit. God said the reason that you had to take that sharp left, J. Cena, and you're saying what you're saying right now is because this is what I need you to say. So he, please hear me by the Spirit. If you call somebody and you tell them I forgive you and they don't receive it, it's on them. If God tells you to sow a seed and the person does not say thank you, it's on them. If God tells you to do something, if he tells you to go on the job and to do this and to go above and beyond and you don't get rewarded, you don't get any accolades, you don't get any uh, promotions, any raises, uh -uh. that's on God said, do not focus on that. Don't focus on that. Keep your eyes on me. See, we get out of peace. We get out of our place of peace when we take our eyes off of him and we start to putting our eyes on other people. God even had to tell, listen, I put my birthday list up every first of the week. I didn't do it this week. I need to put my birthday wish list up there. I said, I didn't say this. Because I was fine. I, I felt led to do that. I never be asking people for stuff. I don't do that. I don't, I, you don't, you hardly ever hear me come on here and say, if you want to sow a seed into my ministry or everybody need to drop a $50 seed, I feel a $50 seed. I don't do that. I just do what he's called me to do. And I let God lead you how he, how you need to be led. If you led to do it, you led to do it. I don't do that. Because I want to make sure that my purpose for doing what I'm called to do stays focused on him. Every now and then I, 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 I get distracted. But I'm so great. Listen, when God corrects you, when God chastises you, when God deals with you, when I tell you it may not feel good right then, baby, but it's a good thing. I heard my sister say, his will is good. And it is. It's good. We may not understand it, but it's good. It's good. He is good. Keep doing what you're doing. Do it as unto the Lord. Make sure that your prayer life stays intact. You've got to fight for it, y'all. We've got to fight to stay in communion with God. You're going to have to fight for it. It's too much going on to get your attention. You've got to fight for your relationships. In this season, the enemy wants to get you so distracted. He wants to distract you. He wants to discourage you. He wants to make you impatient. He's trying to make me do that right now concerning the situation I got going on. Oh, oh this person doesn't. They don't feel like I feel. They're not, they not on the same page. I'm on whoop, whoop, bye. Person ain't even did nothing to me. This is why I cannot afford to allow my flesh to dictate my actions. I cannot allow my feelings to tell me what to do. I, I acknowledge how I'm feeling. I address how I'm feeling. I take how I'm feeling to God. If he tells me to seek someone else out, I seek them out. I ask for help. 
I listen to the help when it is given. Because that's another thing. We be praying and asking God for stuff, and then he gives it to us. And then when he gives it to us, we're like, nah, I'm good. Thank you, though. How are you going to ask somebody, can you tell me what you think? And then you don't hear, you don't receive what they're saying. Now, I'm not saying you have to go do it, but I'm saying you know when that thing, when that thing is a confirmed word. You know that, and, and, and listen, let me just say this right here. Can I just say this? If the person that you're asking, that's the first thing you need to do. If the person that you're asking, number one, if you ask God to show you who to talk to, if you ask God to lead you to the person or have the person, God, I need some help. And he sent someone to talk to you or you or you reach out to someone because you feel led to reach out to them. And then they tell you something and you dismiss it. Now, look at your own self. You don't even need to look at your neighbor. Look at your own self and say, self, mm -mm, mm -mm. you out of line and out of order. If God told you to do it, first of all, I'm believing that we have matured to a place where we will not reach out to somebody that we do not believe will give us godly wisdom. You know not to reach out to your little ghetto friend who don't know the Lord. I hope you know that. But if you're reaching out to someone that you feel, that you believe, that you are led to reach out to, and they give you some wisdom on it, even if the, listen, even if the wisdom that they give you is not sweet like a honeycomb, even if it's bitter like, you know, like, I don't know, what's bit like a lemon. I don't know. Make lemonade out of it. Take it to God. If it doesn't confirm in your spirit, immediately take it to God and say, God, what do I do with this? My brother, my sister, my mom, whoever it is, they have given me this wisdom concerning this situation that I've been praying to you about. What do I do with it? Constant communication with him. Constant communication. Constantly involving God in your situation constantly all throughout the day if you you know and then if you get to a place in your relationship with god that as you're praying right and you're finding yourself that every time i try to pray i'm distracted that's a tall tale sign to you to press in there's that's a tall tale sign to you that i need to shut some things down so that i can get in the presence of god because it's something that I'm needing. It's something that he wants to say to me. That I can't get it in this. I got to be still and hear. And be open to receive. To listen. The enemy is not going to let us. Have this relationship. He's also not going to let you. Have good, healthy, thriving relationships with those that you're connected to. You're going to have to fight for it. You're going to have to fight. If he's coming against your marriage, you're going to have to fight. If he's coming against your children, your finances, your health, your mind, you're going to have to fight. You're going to have to fight. And the way you fight is through prayer. You fight on your knees. When you get up off of your knees, then you fight with your mouth. You don't frivolously talk, but you fight by telling God what you need. And then you go to the word and you declare what his word says. Hold on, y'all. What am I? Somebody's knocking at the door. children honey they come baby they don't care if that that door is locked or not they be like you gonna answer this door <laughs> listen 
God has to be. He has to be it. Listen, the more you commune with him, the more you talk to him. The situation may not become easy to deal. You know, you may have to deal with the situation and it may be a hard situation. But what I promise you, what I promise is you will deal with it differently. Because when we pray, I'm going to say this and I'm going to wrap it up. When we pray, God changes us. Prayer is not, you know, we think we're going to God in prayer for God to change the situation. God, my marriage, God, my health, God, my money, God, my finances, God, me, God, these people, God, my spouse, God. And God be like, okay, he's going to hear you because that's what he does. He's, he's, he's that kind of father. He's going to listen. He wants you to pour it all out. And as you commune with him more, the more time you spend with him, I'm telling you, it's, it's like any other relationship. The more you talk to him, the more time you spend with him, the more you know him, the more you get to know him, you get to know his ways, you get to know how he operates, you get to know how he feels about you, and you begin to recognize how you feel about him. And I'm telling you, honey, sooner or later, you start getting that situation straight, baby. Why? Because he starts to straighten you. It's no way that you can be in a relationship with somebody and start getting close to them and getting to know them, especially when you're communing with them all the time and you don't start feeling something towards that person. You don't start feeling a certain way. You don't, you know, you, you, you start seeing them in a certain way and you, you know, and when, if, when it's a beautiful relationship, when it's a healthy relationship, it's a thriving relationship. Even when you come to your little hits in the road, your little bumps in the road, or even when you come to the when the times with God where you're like, do you hear me? God, this hurts. God, why did you do this? Why did you allow this? Even when you come to those places, because your relationship is so solid, he'll get you through it. You won't even see how you came through it. You'll look back and be like, oh my goodness, God brought me through it. Why? Because you have learned to turn to him instead of them. You've learned. And sometimes, as much as we love people, sometimes they can't help us. They're there to assist and aid. But he's the only one that can give us what we need. I'm telling you. I'm grateful that I have good friends that I can talk to. I'm grateful that I have good friends that I can lean on. I'm grateful that I got good friends that I can cry on physically. I could pick up the phone and hear an audible voice, somebody talking back to me. But even in that. I've come to recognize that because of my relationship with God, because of my, my, my prayer life, because I, 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 I read the word and I, and I seek him, even when I don't feel it, I'm still at a place where I trust him. I told him that this morning. God, I don't, I don't like it. But I trust you. I don't feel, I don't feel you, but I trust you. I don't know how, but I do. And I'm so grateful for my relationship with you. Prayer has to be something that is important to you. And it's so important that you do it constantly. You're constantly talking to God throughout the day. I would not want to have a relationship with anybody that wants to talk to me one time. That's hurtful. You just want to talk to me this one time and you don't want to talk to me no more throughout the day? Like, I don't mean... Come on. Not somebody you're in a close relationship with. I want, you want to talk, you want to hear from them all throughout the day. Even if it's little, little moments. That's all God is asking you for. 
Just talk to me. Just throughout the day. Be aware of me. When that problem comes, when you feel pain in your body, throw your hands up. God, I thank you that I'm alive. I may not feel good, but I thank you that I'm alive. I thank you that you are my healer. I thank you, God, that you've got me this far. I could be dead. I could be gone, but God, you, you, you've been keeping me. I know, I know I'm tired of going through it, God, but I thank you that some way, somehow, you give me the strength to make it through another day. Like, that's what he's teaching me in this season. Like, turn that thing. Turn it. Turn it. It will then do something in you. I'm telling you, prayer changes you. It changes me. It changes us. Even if you got to lay that thing at his feet and just, God, I, I'm tired of this. Whatever. When you release that and you're honest with God and you're transparent before him, that's when he can work. That's when he does his best work. When you're going through it, when you're dealing with things, that's when he does his best work. That's when he says, now you, now I can work with it. Now I can work with it. When Jesus went in that garden of Gethsemane, he was like, God, look, take this thing from me. I got my boys out there. They can't even stay all away with me and pray. God, come on. And God's saying, oh, no, no, I, I got you. Some kind of way he gave Jesus the strength to do what he needed to do. And I don't know who I'm talking to today, but he's going to do the same for you. You may be in a garden of Gethsemane. Where your words fail you. Where you feel like, God, why are you doing this? Can it be another way? And he said, no, this is your portion. This is what I need you to do. When you don't call your friends and your friend's not there. What do you do? You got to trust him in the dark moments. You got to trust him in the quiet moments. You got to trust him. Through something, in something, by something, some type of way, he will give you peace. He'll give you peace. Battles and prayers are not checkoffs. While you may have a plan going into the fight, once you have made first contact with the enemy, everything changes. So the, the reason that another reason that we pray is so that we can resist the blows or, or, or the um, we, we, we can we can we can um block the blows of the enemy we can protect ourselves against the blows of the enemy because it is going to be a fight the question is will you stay the course even if people call you crazy will you stay the uh will you stay the course will you let so much of yourself be invested in prayer that you feel as if you may die if you don't get what you're praying for Will you still stay the course? Will you continue to pray? If God doesn't answer, will you continue to pray? Will you continue to seek him? For desperate times call for desperate prayers. God knows what you need. God knows what you need. And he's ready to hear. Lay it at his feet. He wants to talk to you. You might talk to him five minutes here, 15 minutes in the car, you know, Three minutes in the kitchen, like, just talk. Just talk to him. Don't look at him as like, I go to him one time, and that's it. He does, I, I know that he doesn't like that. He says, pray without ceasing, constantly be in communication with me so that I can talk to you and fill you with what you need at that moment. Amen? All right, repeat this declaration with me. Father, I pray not out of duty, but because I am desperate for you. Desperate for your presence and power in my life. I cry out to you as David did. He cried out and you answered. Give me answers, Lord. Give me divine revelation and discernment to know what is on your heart. As I pour my heart out to you, God, I pray that you will share your heart with me. Let my words bring life and liberty. 
I will not be deterred by what I see. I will persist in prayer until there is breakthrough. In Jesus' name, amen. I pray that you have enjoyed um, our conversation today. Somebody dropped me a title in the chat. What should I title this live, this video? We talked about several different things, um, but I believe the bulk of our conversation today was about prayer, just communing with God and the importance of doing that. Thank you for tuning in to the morning manna. I'm always so, so um, very, um, I'm humbled and honored at the same time that you choose to uh, sit with me and hear um, listen in on the conversation with me and Abba. It is a pleasure. It is a pleasure to serve you, but it's an ultimate pleasure to walk in the call and purpose that God has on my life. Um, I don't take it lightly because your soul, you mean the world to him. And so I just want you to remember that your faith your faith will be built in and through your prayer time with God. If your faith is shaky, your walk is shaky, you know, you feel like you're not, you know, I can't trust you. If you just feel like you're having a difficult time with your walk with the Lord right now, spend a little more time in prayer. I'm telling you, that's going to get you right. Prayer changes things and what I really love about God is that he may not change my situation or he may or let's say for the most of us he may not change our situation when we want him to as fast as we want him to the way that we want him to when we want him to how we want him to But he changes us. That's the beautiful thing. I'm learning to love that about my relationship with him. And I'm learning to love that about my relationship with others. I may not always get what I want in my relationships. But if I trust God, he going to make sure, my God, I'm about to preach now and I got to go. I got to go. I can trust him that he's going to give me what I need. And I pray that for you today. So I pray that as you go, I pray that you will reflect upon this word, that it will marinate, that it will minister to your heart throughout the day, and that you will be reminded that the more you commune with him, the more he'll commune with you. And as a result, he'll make everything all right. He'll make everything all right. So may the Lord bless you and keep you May he make his face to shine upon you and give you his peace. May he be gracious to you. I pray that the Lord will. I pray that when you spend the spend time with the Father today, that 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 a new revelation will be dropped in your spirit. That you will, that you will really tap in to that moment, whether it's a minute, five minutes, thirty minutes, an hour, and he'll pour into you. In a way that you know that you are loved, that you are not forgotten, that you are you are forever the apple of his eye. And I pray that you will never forget how much he truly, truly loves you and he is for you. Blessings to you. If you have not registered for the gathering this Saturday, you want to be there 10 to 12. Come on out and join me. We're going to be celebrating my birthday. I'm asking everybody to wear a shade of pink. Um, and just come ready to receive from God. Not from me, but from God. I ask that you would pray. Um, if you won't be able to make it, please pray. And um, I hope I'll see you there. Registration um, is required. Um, you can find that information on my Facebook page, and also on Jacina Speaks. So I hope I see you there. If not, I hope I'll see you tomorrow. Have a great day. Love you guys.